but there are a lot of factors which we can influence when thinking and trying to treat a disease like intradiscal pain as a disorder. So, uh, for example, the interleukin-1, or let's start here, the pro-inflammatory cytokines, the cytokines that are really causing and signaling the tissue damage, the interleukin-1, for example, the tumor necrosis factor alpha, but we also have anti-catabolic cytokines, for example, like the interleukin-1 receptor antagonist, which is the naturally occurring antagonist to the factors caused by interleukin-1. And very important is that we do have a lot of growth factors, and knowledge about all those growth factors gets more and more just during recent years. All those factors have an input and an impact on the homeostasis of a spinal motion segment. So in the treatment, or new treatment, we are using a lot of those here in the slide mentioned factors. For example, cytokine antagonists. We can use growth factors, cell-based tissue replacement, or genetic modification of the cells. Or, and that's what I will focus on next, or a combination of different factors. So in general, of all those therapies I just showed you on the last slide, uh, the application is in the very early stages and mostly limited to experimental studies in vitro or to animal models. But what have we learned so far from different models is that the use of single growth factor, for example, the insulin-like growth factors as a single, as a solid factor, or the transforming growth factor beta, they have the capacity to induce proliferation, to induce regeneration, but as a single factor, they are not able to do it in the trials that I've uh, mentioned. Uh, autologous blood preparations, they are becoming more and more popular all over the world, and nearly every single yeah, scientific convention has a specialty day just dealing with these factors. But the, or my problem or the biggest problem with those factors is that, are, that there are about 300 different systems to get or to prepare a platelet-rich plasma. So one thing which is different from a normal PRP system, I will explain now. It's the therapy called Autologous Condition Serum, the ACS therapy, marketed under the name Orthokine. And this is, which is just shown in this video, just prepared by incubating venous patient blood in a special tube, in a special syringe. And after a centrifugation and extraction process, the ACS is then portioned and stored. And again, in contrast to a PRP preparation, you can store it in a fridge at minus 18 centigrade Celsius. After the preparation process, which is necessary to be done once for all patients, uh, the serum is injected in a series of injections once or twice weekly. Three or four injections are given in spinal diseases. This is the major slide just showing what happens during the time of incubation, during the time of the preparation process, namely that the amounts of the interleukin-1 receptor antagonist as well as the aforementioned growth factors is elevated after the production. But the pivotal element is the syringe, which is, is a stimulus for the blood cells. And during the time of incubation, the cells partly de novo produce those anti-inflammatory substances. There was one trial just published in the journal Spine a couple of years ago when the orthokine ACS injections were compared to triamcinolone. 10 milligrams and 5 milligrams dosages, just showing over a time of six months that they were superior with less side effects to those steroid doses. Um, another trial, the discogenic pain trial, as I call it, is what I will show you next. It's a non-blinded prospective case series or a controlled study in patients with lumbar disc pain. So we verified our diagnosis first by a correct anamnesis and clinics, as well as an MRI scan 
and a positive distension test. And what's written here is that there were um, other inclusion criteria, for example, no relief after eight weeks of conservative therapy, a pain reduction of less than 50% on a VAS of pain after a periradicular or peri uh, or epidural injection. The most important factor was that the discography was positive, just indicating and showing a positive memory pain in the patients. They had no failed low back surgery, no infection or bony problems. So in the first step, all patients got this discography, just indicating discogenic pain by positive reaction of the patient. And then they got three injections, CT-guided intradiscal injections, 19 patients, and we followed them up over six months. And this is the slide just showing the results over six months after the single injections just with an average pain improvement after 12 weeks of 58%. Uh, 11 out of 19 patients reported at least a 50% pain reduction still after six months, and there were no infection or side effects in this series. So it was just a small patient group. It's a heterogeneous disease, we all know that, so the patient selection is very important. In this trial, we had no control group and not yet an objective assessment. We are right now working on different MRI protocols and performing quantitative uh, MRI to assess really the state of the matrix. So in conclusion, although these results must be confirmed in larger clinical trials, we can say that the intradiscal as well as the periradicular or epidural injection of the ACS is worthy of consideration given its impressive safety record as well as rich mixture of growth factors as well as anti-inflammatory cytokines. Thank you very much for your attention.